Ms. Fox turned to the day of the murder, February 12, 2008, and the classroom at E.O. Green Junior High where the murder took place. Using an aerial diagram of the school, Ms. Fox asked Mariah to identify the classroom and to confirm where she had been sitting on the morning in question. Mariah hesitated, and Ms. Fox repeated the question. As Mariah pointed to the diagram, she began to cry. Sheriff Anton offered tissues and water. Mariah took the tissues, leaving the water bottle unopened on the edge of the witness stand. Calmed, she went ahead to describe how 28 students had started off the day together in their homeroom, where they stayed for about 15 minutes before walking together to the computer lab to work on research papers. Mariah's paper was about Anne Frank. 20 minutes after the class had settled into the computer lab, Mariah turned away from her computer to ask a friend a question. What did you see? What happened? Miss Fox asked. Mariah looked sidelong at Brandon, then back at Miss Fox, who repeated the question. Mariah lowered her head. Her shoulder-length red blonde hair fell forward. She attempted to push it back, but strands of hair caught in the corners of her mouth. Mariah was by then 17 years old. It was not difficult, though, to see her at 14, her age, when she watched 14-year-old Brandon become a murderer and 15-year-old Larry leave life. Flush with emotion, caught in the magnifying lens of the witness stand, Mariah began to tremble. Terror emerged from her eyes and unfurled across her body. She was not alone. When Mariah entered the room, she brought murder with her. It was with us all. about was, was hate and what happens and from your perspective too as, as an analyst what happens to this giant emotion like hate when it arrives in the courtroom uh, and, and I know you, you, you write a section of the book about yeah. dealing with this yeah. but, I'm, but it, is the courtroom a space and I also was interested in your take on the courtroom versus the analytic scene right. and, and what happens to a big canonical emotion like hate yeah. when it's structured through the courtroom space. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> one thing that, and, and dear listener, I have laryngitis, as you can hear. Um, one, one of the things that um, is important, I think, to understand that um, the law um, is a juridical discourse about right and wrong. Um, and I spent a lot of time um, reading um, legal opinions, um, and I really recommend reading Supreme Court um, decisions. They're beautifully written often, and the language of the law is astonishing. Um, and I got really interested in it. Um, but you know, it's a, it's uh, uh, what is it? I, I think it's it's Aristotle or it's Socrates, right? Who says um, uh, law is reason without emotion, and it is reason above all. Um, and so the discourse of law is a discourse of reason. Um, the discourse of psychoanalysis actually takes you into a kind of melancholic space. Um, and through that melancholic space, you're often looking backward and forward and backward and forward. Um, and you're directed by affect, um, not only hate, but um, uh, you know, a host of envy, um, joy, all, all sorts of, of affect states. Um, but specifically with regard to the trial, um, one of the things that I, I found, and I find this in life as well, that we're often eager to deny the reality of hate, um, and that um, I actually think there's real value in trying to understand the way in which hate functions, and the job that it does, and the destructive job that it does, um, especially when um, one is eager to um, deny or the recognition of another. Um, one really good way to do that is to hate them or to say that um, I wish I could sock him in the face, a la Donald Trump. And, you know, I mean, I, I really, I find what's happening in, uh, on the Republican side of this uh, election cycle where uh, hate 
is actually sort of uh, traffics as um, a mode of governance um, is is deeply frightening to me, um, and I, I think we're seeing, you know, uh, today the rally in Chicago had to be stopped um, because the, the, uh, fighting broke out um, within the hall and outside, um, and um, yeah, it, it's it's a really troubling moment um, in uh, American history um, in this respect. I think. How, do, how did you handle your own emotions as you were working through this book? Uh, probably not as well as I should have. Um, and um, But what I did do was I tried to pay a lot of attention to, um, you know, a, a good example of how I did not handle it well is walking along an expressway at 2 in the morning as I was trying to figure out how Brandon rode his bike and semis were, you know, going by. Um, but... Um, I tried to pay a lot of attention to where my mind was going. In psychoanalysis, we call that reverie. Um, and so I kept my notes from the trial, don't really have a lot of, um, uh, I, I wasn't keeping notes of what people were saying. Sometimes I was, I relied on the court transcript for that. So my notes are often my reverie like what, where my mind was going as these things were going on and then trying to bring myself back to the witness or the defense or the prosecution. Um, so I was trying to monitor my own internal states. Um, the other thing I did was swim. Um, and Maggie and, uh, Nelson also writes about swimming. Um, so, um, and you know, I, I, I swim and I find it to be really remarkable um, way to clear my mind um, and uh, I, uh, you know through my body basically um, so and, and here you can swim outside um, which was especially phenomenal um, and I, I swam for a while with the Santa Barbara um, uh, girls um, high school team um, and, and they, they taught me quite a bit actually they were great um, so um, uh, I took care of myself that way, um, but I, I, I came undone. Um, you know, there was a lot of it that was really traumatic, um, and um, it remains so. Um, I recorded a um, audio version of the book um, and was in the studio for five days doing that. And when I got to the moment where um, Don King, Larry's mother, arrives in the emergency room, I, I had to stop um, and. Um, the moment when, uh, at the end, when May Fox brings out the picture of Larry um, and asks the jury to look upon him was uh, uh, truly overwhelming for me. Um, and I don't know, I, I don't suppose that's not a way of taking care of yourself. I guess it is a way of taking care of yourself to come undone. Um, it's a little hard to come undone in public like that or to come undone in front of a camera like this. Um, but, you know, um, that, that's the reality of what projects like these, that's where they take you.